Hi, I'm Dan and I work on the Gadgets team and if you're looking at this video you've probably watched some of our introductory materials and you're excited about gadgets and you want to get started developing. So I'm going to take you through a couple of the really popular features of gadgets uh, starting from the basics and moving up to something a little more functional. So let's look at some code. So here we're looking at the, the basic framework of a gadget and you can see that the, the basic XML elements are there. You have the module tags, the module press tags, and the content type container. Um, and the, the one thing that you might notice about this is that we've added um, a module preference, which is requiring the feature set prefs, which is one of the gadget libraries. And that's right here. And this will allow us to uh, load and save preferences to the gadget storage. The first thing we need to do in order to have this gadget actually do anything useful is that we need to create a preference for the user. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic preference called color, uh, which is stored internally with the name color, uh, and then it will have a display name, which we can set separately, of color with a capital C. In addition to the, the name and the display name, we can set a default value if the user doesn't choose to enter an object. So here, we've decided to use the hexadecimal color white. Now, if you've tried entering this XML into, your, into a test gadget on your own computer, you might notice that this gadget really doesn't do anything, and it doesn't even actually display the preferences options to you if you're trying to load the gadget. And that's because we haven't initialized the gadget preferences object, which is the next thing that we're doing. So if you look at the code now, we've inserted a script tag with JavaScript that just very simply creates a variable and assigns a new preferences object to it. And now you can see that we've added a little bit more code, which is going to allow this to actually use the user's preferences value to do something useful on the page. So we've created a new IG register onload handler, which is a simple way of, or a more complicated way actually, of saying do this once the page is loaded. And what that does is it calls a function in it, which loads the color value from the user's preferences, and then sets that color as the background color of an HTML box, which we've created on the page which you can see right here. In addition to capturing values that the user has entered through the interface, it's possible to set preferences programmatically through your JavaScript code. I'm not going to get into the details of that here, but if you're interested in this, you can read more in the documentation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add tabs to this interface. So again, like we did with the preferences, we're going to start out by requiring feature tabs. Once we've required the tabs feature, we can then create a new tabs object, just like we did before with preferences, and add a new tab to the page, as you can see here. There are several ways to create tabs. We've done the simplest one, which is to give a title as the first parameter, and then an HTML ID as the second parameter. So if you notice, box, in quotes, corresponds to div ID equals box that we've already specified below. So this will create a new tab that contains that content. As you can see here, we've created our new Hello tab. If we'd created multiple tabs, it would also be possible to save as a user preference the value of the selected tab, so that if a user decides to navigate away from their gadget and then return later, the tab that they were using before is still selected. The next feature we're going to use is fetching a feed of content from another page on the internet. There are three variants to this, and the one that we're going to use is fetch feed as JSON, which takes a feed on another website and then converts it into a JSON object, which you can use in JavaScript. As you can see here, we're taking the Google Gadgets group feed, passing it into a function, and then taking the title and the description and inserting it into the box that we've created before. This is what that would look like in the preview. Finally, to put all the features together, we're going to create a new preference, feed, that takes a value from the user of what feed they would like to use and display on their gadget. So as you can see here, we've created the new feed preference, given it the name feed, and then set as the default value the gadget's feed that we were fetching before. Then, lower in the code, we're fetching the feed URL from the preferences and then passing that to our fetching function. Here we have the completed gadget working inside of iGoogle. And you can see that we have the feed title and description captured from the JSON object, 
we have the Hello tab, which we created. And if we go in here, we can also edit the preferences that we've set up. So we can change the color and the feed that we're selecting. So you've created your sample application and you're wondering what to do to go from here. So what I've done is I've created another sample application that takes all the features we were using before and goes slightly further. Before, where we had one tab, which isn't really useful by itself, we now have two. In addition to that, we've got a second preference, which loads an additional feed into our newly created tab. What I'd like you to do is to try and add these features to the gadget you created before, and we'll post the code so that you can see what it looks like when it's finished. So even with this new sample, all we've really done is touch the surface of what you can do with gadgets. So I'd really encourage you to check out all the documentation, the blog, and the articles that we've posted so you can go on to write your own great gadgets.